And now for something completely different. Have you been bored AF during quarantine? I know I have. But one way I've been dealing with it is playing with Legos like I'm a two-year-old. <laughs> but seriously, I really recommend them if you're looking to break away from the computer and do something else that uses your mind. It's just, uh, yeah, it's all around. It's good fun. And at the end of it, you get some cool desk swag. So highly recommend picking up a small Lego pack and start a new hobby that's not as expensive as collecting knives. You know, I'm looking at you. And we're back, what up guys? It's your boy Brent, AKA Backpack B. Wanted to check in, say what up, see how you're all doing in quarantine. Hope everybody's hanging in there still. If you're new here and you like knives or you like EDC stuff or just random cool things, consider smashing that subscribe button for me. It would really help out the channel and yeah, I'd love to see you here every week. Today, I wanted to show a little behind the scenes of my collection, how it's been progressing this year, and I'll show you the knives I've picked up so far in 2020. All right, let's check out the collection. Let's dive in. Check it out. That right there is my happy space. So I've talked about my metal knife boxes on the channel before, and last time I had just gotten the custom foam insert for my first case right here, which is now packed full. Since then I got another foam insert for my second case, and I've been filling it with knives that I've gotten this year. So today I wanted to show you guys the knives in my second case, so say bye to case one. Maybe in another video I'll go through the beginning of my collection, but for now I just wanted to cover this year. I also have a third case, but I haven't gotten an insert for that yet, but uh, when it's time I will do that as well. And oh yeah, I got some Backpack B stickers made that I'm super amped about, more about those later. Okay squad, let's check out my knife collecting from this year. I'm gonna try to be fast and keep this simple because there's a lot of them. <laughs> I have a problem. So right off the bat, this is the Kubi KU274 in D2 Steel. I picked this up on a whim. I guess I was curious about the brand and so far I'm pretty impressed. It's a full tank fixed blade with machined G10 handle scales. It's definitely built like a tank. It has an awesome Kydex sheath. I love the blade profile on this guy and the stone wash finish. I haven't used it that much yet other than to whale on some cardboard, but one day I'm gonna do something with it, like go into the woods and baton some wood for fun. But yeah, that's, uh, that's that. Next up is the Spyderco Little Native designed by Eric Lesser, which I'm a huge fan of. I wanted a blacked out Spyderco with a wire pocket clip that I could carry to my office without scaring my coworkers. Its size, the compression lock, and the ergos are amazing. Although it's small, it's very well built, and the forward finger choil helps give this knife a very comfortable feel in the hand. This is going to stay in my collection for sure. I carry it all the time. I've done a full behind the edge on this knife, so go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Go pick one up. Next up is the Tucson TS-179 Perfecto designed by Tepe Designs. I'm a big Tepe Designs guy, you know? Uh, and this is the knife that made me fall in love with this work. I like his aesthetic, and when I saw it, I just had to have it. I got one of the first 10 ever made, so that's pretty dope too. Uh, the Tucson fit and finish was impeccable on this piece. It's titanium with S90V steel. I like the small size. It's a good Tucson to get if you have a lot of knife restrictions in your area. And overall, this knife really made me fall in love with Tepe Designs work. So I have a couple more of his pieces now, um, and I have a couple on the way. But uh, yeah, it's great. You should check it out. So I followed that up by picking up the TS-178 Tintera because I was on a Tucson kick and I saw that Tepe and Night Morning had a collab that nobody had reviewed on YouTube yet. So I jumped on it. I was also looking to mix it up a little bit in terms of the knives that I'd been buying and this one felt very different from what I had. I've never had a Karambit and this one was just unique. I love the design of this knife. I use it all the time. It absolutely murders cardboard and as you can see, I use these knives a lot. That's why they're so dirty. <laughs> I need to go through and clean everything soon, but anyway. I love this knife, and it's a permanent piece in my collection. So this next one is the Civivi Chronic, and it's a eh knife in my opinion. It's not a bad knife by any means, and I'm a huge fan of Civivi. I just think that a couple things about the execution of this knife bother me. I've done a full behind the edge on this one, so check it out if you haven't yet. I got this specifically for that review, so I don't think it's going to stay in my collection for very long. And of course, this is just my opinion, so if you love this knife, that's great. I'm glad that you're getting joy out of it. Moving on, this is the CRKT Pete, a great budget offering from Columbia River Knife and Tool and that was designed by Knife OG Jesper Voxnes. I have nothing but great things to say about this piece. I love the ergos, it's small and lightweight. The use of budget materials was executed perfectly. I love the blue aluminum backspacer. It's the star of the design language here and yeah, I carry it a lot. I love an upgraded version of this with better steel and upgraded handle material. I'd be all about it, but nothing bad to say about this guy. You should try it out if you're looking for a budget offering. 
Next up is the Civivi Baccaro, and since I've had it, I've fallen in love with this knife. I use it all the time. It's a bigger knife that feels a lot smaller than it actually is because it's lightweight and the blade stock is super thin, which also means it's very slicey. The action is smooth as hell. It's running on washers. I love the floating thumb studs and the thumb hole, which allows multiple ways of deployment. There's a great fidget factor on this knife, believe it or not, and the G10 is sculpted just enough to help the ergonomics. I love the texturing on the G10 and the finish of the blade. It's a good all around knife and it's a keeper in my collection for sure. Next is the Tucson TS-163 designed by Vincent Oliver, which is a knife I picked up randomly because it's so weird looking. I also wanted to see what super budget Tucsons were like, and I really like the blade on this guy, it just needs work on the handle, clip, and weight department. The action of this knife is super smooth though, and I do get a lot of joy from it, so it's going to stay in my collection. Now next up is the Kaiser Maestro, which is one of my top five knives right now, believe it or not. I love this thing, I've also featured it in a full episode of Behind the Edge, so go watch that if you haven't. I've been carrying this piece for a while now, and it's grown on me since I got it. The Kaiser's fit and finish holds up super well, it's such an interesting look. I love the large thumb hole, the thumb studs, and the flipper tab, makes it a super fidgety knife. The design by Azo is amazing, I think it's very unique, and it's a keeper in my collection. It's a lot of pocket time right now, and I'm going to continue to carry it. Next in my collection is the Arcform Slimfoot Auto, which I fell in love with the looks of this knife when I first got it. The simplicity of the lines and the confidence it exudes really spoke to me. Functionally, I hate this thing. <laughs> the ergos are really rough and it's just not comfortable in hand. But other than the ergos, I do like this knife. I think the fit and finish from Protec on this piece was amazing and it's staying in my collection for that reason. I do like certain parts of it. All right, moving right along, this is the Ferrum Forge Mini Archbishop. I just put out a behind the edge of this a week or two ago, and I'm in love with this knife still. It's one of the top knives of the year for me. I think the ergos feel great. It's great in hand, even though it's a small piece. And yeah, I did a full episode of Behind the Edge in this, so go check it out. It's uh, permanently in my collection. And this right here is the Wee Knives Kite Fin. I like this piece quite a lot. The fit and finish from Wee Knives is incredible. Everything about this was dialed in right out of the box. The amount of detail they worked into this piece was great for a production knife. The bronze hardware and the blue anodization on the handle look great against the dark titanium scales. I'm not a huge fan of the satin blade on this guy. I'd love to put like a nice subtle stone wash on the blade, but overall a great EDC option that I'm keeping in my collection. Okay, and here we have the Kubi KU-232, which is my favorite Kubi out of the three I got this year. I do wish there was a little bit more of internal milling to lighten this guy up because it's pretty heavy, but in terms of build quality, I'm super impressed and this one will stay in my collection. Next is another Kubi, but one that I don't like as much. This is the KU-256. This one kind of looked interesting online, so I got it on a whim when I bought the other two Kubi knives I got this year. But I have to say, now that I have it, the design kind of feels corny, gimmicky, I don't know. It feels like choices were made just to give it this geometric, angular vibe. There's no chamfering or no effort to make this knife feel good in hand. It's really just not a good knife design. I'm not the biggest fan, and I don't think it's going to last long in my collection. But yeah, they all can't be winners, right? Next up is the Crimson Red Sog Terminus XR in D2 Steel. And I love the Terminus XR. In fact, this is my second one. I have the carbon fiber one that they discontinued, but uh, this knife is now a staple in my collection. I'm going to get each colorway of this piece eventually, and I carry it all the time, and highly recommend it. That being said, it's actually going to be the first knife I give away on my channel, and that's coming up soon. More details about that at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Moving right along, this is the CJRB Centros designed by Dylan Mallory. This is an amazing budget offering that sets the bar, in my opinion, for quality design at a low price point. I feel like this piece exemplifies the value that a good designer brings to the table. The materials and the fit and finish are all great already, but the design really takes this piece to the next level. Great ergonomics. Love the silhouette, love the feel in hand. The thumb studs deploy this knife so well. It's a home run of a piece, and I would recommend it to anyone. I like the Centro so much that I picked up the CJRB Rampart in the same colorway. Although I feel like the Centros is a better design and execution, the Rampart is still a very fun knife. It feels sporty and aggressive, and I really like it overall. And yeah, it's gonna stay in my collection. I really like this colorway that they came out with. The grayish blue really is just nice. I like it a lot. So I finally picked up a Spyderco Delica 4 this year, and now I know what everybody likes about this knife. It's super lightweight, it's a perfect EDC size. So far I'm liking the VG10 steel, and I added the aftermarket Wiseman Karambit ring and a deep carry pocket clip, which makes this piece feel super exciting in my opinion. And I've been carrying it a lot lately. I definitely have fallen for the Delica 4, and I see what everybody's talking about.
And look at this butte. This is the BRS Evolve Eon. It's a new addition to my collection that I really like. It's designed by Elijah Isham, who's an absolute wizard. And this knife is featured in my next episode of Behind the Edge, which is coming out really soon. I've been editing it and it's almost ready for prime time. So it should be a great episode. Keep an eye out for that. The next knife that I picked up was the Spyderco Smock. It's a joy to carry and it's such an amazing all around piece. I love the button lock and the style of this knife. I added an MXG deep carry pocket clip that's anodized blue um, and some blue hardware from Blades We Love. It's been one of my most carried knives lately and uh, yeah, so far I love it. And the next knife is the Kershaw Bare Knuckle in 20 CV steel from Smoky Mountain Knives. And I have to say, I love this piece. I used to get a lot of Kershaw knives at the start of my collecting, but I've stopped because, you know, I hate speed safe and I felt like their pieces were getting pretty repetitive. The Bare Knuckle is the first Kershaw I picked up in over a year and this thing is awesome. A great EDC option with a great steel for under $100 made in the USA. You know, it's a win-win. It's great. You should pick one up for yourself. Uh, this one's a little random. It's the Gerber Pry Bird. This was a new pickup for me because I like all the Gerber knives that hold replaceable razor blades. I use these at work a lot to cut out presentation mats and I got their latest one to test it out. It's a tad bigger than I wish it was and I also wish it had a pocket clip. So I'm on the fence about this piece, but you know, I just got it. So we'll see how it goes. And finally, this is the Leatherman Free T4. I wanted a small multi-tool that I could EDC that had a pocket clip and enough tools to get most things done. I went for this model, but I have to say I wish it had pliers instead of scissors. That's the only bad thing I have to say about it. I have gotten a lot of use out of it and it's part of my current EDC rotation. So yeah, and also it's made in the USA. Very pumped about that. And that's my collecting so far from this year. I actually have like three two suns on their way also that have been stuck in China for the past two months. I also have a Blaze We Love Para 3 on the way and my first Cansep knife, which I'm excited to get my hands on to test out. Yeah, I hope that was fun for you guys. So guys, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm super excited to be doing my first giveaway on the channel. I'll be giving away the SOG Terminus XR and D2 Steel with Crimson Red G10 handles. It's a great knife that I love, so I'm pumped to be giving one away to you guys. Also, these stickers are free to anyone who wants some, so just DM me on Instagram and I'll mail them to you. First come, first serve. On Wednesday this week, I'll be posting a standalone giveaway video to YouTube, so watch that video on Wednesday, and it'll tell you how to enter to win this knife. Uh, super pumped, so hope you guys can be a part of it guys thank you so much for hanging out today it's been a lot of fun a new episode of behind the edge is dropping soon so keep an eye out for that and i hope to see you soon guys all right backpack be out deuces